So the key focus of this session is application performance monitoring. Uh, I have a stock trader app, .NET app, and I want to know how can I monitor this and look at it and gain an understanding of its health and build up a real solid picture using Operations Manager. And what are we going to do and how is this going to be built up and what's it going to look like? So let's first of all, what we're going to do in this session is we're just going to build a, we're going to build on some learnings so that you understand when we finally get to APM and we finally get to see what's happening, you know, what is happening. So obviously I'm sitting inside Operations Manager. If you're not used to Operations Manager, it's, um, you know, Microsoft's monitoring tool has been around for, you know, since forever. And um, in Operations Manager, I have uh, deployed agents out to computers. So if I just go to uh, Windows computers and inside Windows computers, if we just go to NET, okay, we just go to network. Uh, and you can see there's network one here. Um, uh, we just look at it from a Windows computer perspective that it's it, it's fully healthy, uh, but we need to go much deeper than a Windows computer to know you know if I if I have a look at it you know what does it look like. So on top of Windows computer, um, we've also put in the um, SQL management pack, so we're able to go and look at the database that's sitting behind it, and we're able to put in we're able to put in the IIS management pack. So from an application standpoint, we're able to get a really good understanding of, you know, uh, you know, straight away we can just see our IIS website roles. So it's just going to come in and, you know, there's network one and, you know, what version is on it. And we're able to go to uh, website health and uh, very quickly we're able to see if I just filter by NETWRK by network. So network one has a couple of websites. It has Fabicam. It has a default website, and um, it's where we have um, our Stock Trader app installed. So you can see that um, we've gone out and we've discovered a couple of websites, a couple of ports, a couple of locations, and um, you know uh, very quickly we're able to build an understanding of how healthy my uh, server is what it looks like so if I were to go back to uh, Windows computers and on Windows computers if I just go back to uh, network one and I just open a diagram view of network one um, what's going to build now is um, all what we have monitored on the system so if I just expand some of this out and uh, drag it down. So you can see here, I have my IIS uh, web roles, and I can see when I look inside the web roles, you know, that they're uh, all right now, that they're healthy. Um, and when I click over here, you can see there's Fabicam and there's Stock Trader. So you can see, like, here's the .NET, uh, you know, my application, my application pools, the default website. The default application pool and if I scroll over here you're gonna see the stock trader uh, application pools and they all look healthy okay now here's a really important thing to understand is this all looks healthy and I'm going to go to the website and parts of the website are gonna fail and the first question that's gonna spring to mind is hey how come uh, SCAM says that this is all healthy right now, but, um, you know, it's it's not healthy because when I try and go to the website, it doesn't work. And so the, the, the thing you got to understand is what is SCAM actually trying to monitor for? And, you know, to try and get an understanding of is the health working and what's the health model or how do I get to that model? So right now, what um what these what, what scam is monitoring in this example is for example is w3 svc started are the application pools 
and you know have they started are they enabled are they working if there's authentication methods can it log on and you know we can see the stock trader uh, web app here and so for example if i were to go and open um, a performance view we'd be able to see uh, you know, if there was performance counters, which there isn't, uh, on it, if there's performance counters for the environment, what would they look like? Um, you know, I, I get to see the environment and I just get to see, you know, if it's healthy or not. If my network connections, if IIS, you know, all my Windows services and then Stock Trader is running on uh, a SQL Express and you can see um, that SQL Express is healthy, meaning that, you know, when I hover over it, you can see services started, you know, it, it's all working, life is good, okay? So, that this is the first step that we need to do to get, you know, a decent view, a decent look at an application performance monitor, okay? So, right now, we know from one standpoint, which is when we look at the server, that the server looks okay, looks healthy, looks happy, things are working okay. Now, the thing is, is we have uh, this website, uh, Stock Trader, but out of the box, SCOM wouldn't be seeing, wouldn't be trying to find out, can I actually get to Stock Trader and what happens? And so Operations Manager has the idea of a um, synthetic transaction. And what a synthetic transaction is, is you saying, for example, I want you to go to a location and I want you to see, is it working? Okay, so I'll just show you what a nice synthetic transaction. So right here, we can do a web uh, application transaction monitor, which is what we have in place. I could do, you know, TCP port check, an ODBC connection, an Oracle, you know, performance collecting rule, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so from a stock check, if we just um, go in and uh, have a look at this. So here's what we are asking SCOM to do. We are asking SCOM to go to these four uh, uh, web URLs. And we want to know if you can get to them and what the you know total HTTP code is. Okay, so we've said, if the um, status code is greater or equal to 400 and if you just drop down here you can see 400 is a bad request and so anything after 400 and um, we've got a problem with but we can also put in response times and we can say look we want to see what's happening in terms of you know seconds or milliseconds in terms of what's working so you can see here that we are asking SCOM to go to um, four locations, four network locations, and see what's happening when we get there. And if we go back to here, we can see that it's critical. So if I go and open an alert view for Stock Trader, you can see that quotes is failing. Okay, so we can see here, uh, you know, look, uh, there's a problem with quotes, it's not working. Okay. And so if I were to go to the Entity Explorer, if I go to a Health Explorer, you can see that Quotes is bringing up a 400. And if I minus that, it'll tell you, look, Request 1, Stock Trader's healthy, Stock Trader Logon is healthy, um, uh, the account is healthy. It's only when I go to Quotes that it fails. And when I go to quotes, it's saying here, when I go and I have a look at it, it's saying, look, it's a bad status code. So really quickly, you can see DNS resolution's fine. Um, you know, uh, lots of stuff is working fine here. The thing is, is, is that that page, Stock Trader, um, quotes, just isn't coming up. Okay. And so if I were to just go straight to my home page, and I just go to login, and on my login, I just uh, put in a login, and I uh, jump on. So you can see, first of all, you know, the system was fine, 
you can see if I go to you know my account ID I get a breakdown of what's happening with my account ID if I go to quotes and I go to quotes quotes fails okay and uh, so what's wrong is you, you know we have an error um, uh, uh, and the thing is is that by default SCOM wouldn't wouldn't know or wouldn't be checking for this okay so yeah okay we've got an error we've got a problem okay so uh, inside our environment if we go back to our alert view it tells you straight away look you know trade quotes has a problem and it's in 18 minutes now here's something that i want to explain to you because because this is really critical I started off by building up the idea that uh, inside uh, my Windows computer, inside network, when I said, uh, you know, do a um, diagram view on this, that this system uh, was fully healthy. Okay, so I said at the start, you're going to see that the system is healthy, yet we're going to have a problem. Okay. And the thing is, is that out of the box, the system does not know that it has to go and check web pages. Okay, so it's checking things like, can I get to the default website? Um, you know, is IIS okay? You know, application pools, they're fine. So that's the first thing. The next thing is we said, well, let's go and create a synthetic transaction. And this is the synthetic transaction that you're looking at here. But the key thing about this synthetic transaction is, is that we had to go and say, this is the page that I want you to go and look at or investigate. Okay, so it's not really practical for you to say, I want to set up a synthetic transaction against every single page on my web application, because, you know, that, that wouldn't be really smart. But what you would do with this web application you know, um, so if I go in here and I look at the properties, sorry, if I go in here and um, I just uh, open the Health Explorer, whoop, open the Health Explorer. So you can see here that, you know, um, from this request, you know, I had to physically go in and list the page that I want to go in and you can see the state changes there's been 94 state changes okay so I had to physically go in and write that down and that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense you know so, so first of all what this is telling me is is that there's a problem on a page okay now I would typically ask um you know, watch your nodes in other locations to go and do this um, check for me. And so a typical thing that you would do is you would have a, just imagine you have a data center, you have, um, you know, application server on in the data center and you have uh, users in different locations uh, saying that they have different problems with it. People, you know, maybe in, in head office where the data center is, aren't having problems. As people get further and further away, they're having problems. And so it'd be a really good idea for you to put the watcher nodes in a couple of uh, locations that kind of represent what's hap you know, what, what things are looking like for the user. So if I just hit edit on that. So when I go into the application, and I just say, you know, configure settings and watch your node. It would make sense for you if I had, you know, a couple of locations that I would say where users are, I'd put a SCOM agent on a machine there. I'd make it a watch your node. And then I'd be able to see pretty quickly, hey, you know what? Uh, the problem, uh, uh, I can get to the application local, fine, when it's on a remote location in the watcher node I'm just not getting there as quick I have a problem there okay but once again I had to physically go and put these locations in and so the very sort of last area that we get to in in terms of building a performance view for an object is um, inside operations manager 
we now have you know uh, application performance monitoring so inside uh, application monitoring if I go to applications you can see um, the uh, applications that I have monitored it just normally takes a second yeah okay so there's a stock trader three tier so if I just go on to stock trader now and I give it a second what it's going to do is it's going to go and draw up what it knows about the application and given a couple of minutes it's going to fill out uh, each of these you know its response times availability performance and reliability and so as an application owner real quickly I'm going to be able to go in and get a good understanding of what my application's doing what it looks like what its health is and very likely what end users are experiencing and what they you know are going to be looking at in this environment so if I go to uh, .NET monitoring and I go to active alerts I can see that um, there's things like you know uh, perform you know issues that have come in and if I go to stock trader and I go to active alerts you can see I have a bunch of active alerts in for stock trader and so uh, if I just go and have a look at the stock trader app it will tell me what components it sees as having issues or having challenges okay so here is the thing is the idea of applic of APM application performance monitoring is is that APM puts an additional bit of code into the IIS website and the purpose of that is is that it's viewing all server side requests for the application so when I was able to go in and say that I had an error and something has tripped up that that is going to create a, you know, an application fault and we're going to be able to go in and have a look at it so I was in operations manager so let's just stay in operations manager for a moment so you could just stay inside this environment and I could go you know I, I, I could have a look here and see that there's you know here's alerts coming in but if for example I were to go to uh, a server exception you know an application exception and um, it has a separate diagnostics page where I'm able to go and, and drill right into something and from drilling right into the alert I'm able to go in and get you know really quite a lot of detailed information to understand what's happening and I can go to my exception here and on my exception it's given me the actual line of the compiled code and it's given me the message only content controls are allowed direct uh, are allowed directly in contact with the page that contains content controls and it's given me the uh, result of the problem and so for example if I go to the parsing area it's showing me hey look this is what was parsed and this is what you know one of the things that I had as a problem uh, there's the page that I went to you know trade quotes and if I go to file encoding it's just explaining you know what the encoding thing is so so, so here, here's the key driver for you is um, what, what APM does is it builds a bridge it builds a connection between people who are developing apps or apps that you've already bought if you don't have your own dev team and the end user who is you, you know experiencing the problem and and that bridge is the DevOps connection which is what you're doing with APM you're going in you're making a connection you're gaining an understanding and you're able to go and present that to the dev people okay so this um, what you're looking at here is a separate uh, web console so it is possible to for for you not to give the scom console to your dev team if they just wanted to go in and say hey I just want to see something you know instantly like what just came in here they can just go in here they don't need to go and look at um, the scom console they can just go into a, you know the web console but but 
um, APM and this web console gives them a lot, like an incredible amount of uh, flexibility because um, if an issue that came up and it's generating a problem and they look at it in here, they can say, you know what, we understand what that is and we're working with that and we can create a rule for it. And so what the rule is, is to say, um, you know what, um, uh, it, it's by design, the performance issue is by design, next, and from design, I can say, you know, once it meets these, um, you know, event durations, and I can go next, uh, I can say by design, and then last but not least, I can put an expiry date on this bug, so if, for example, this is something that we're working on, but it's not in this current dev cycle, um, Uh, you know, we can just put it in. We can say, you know, um, it's going out for the next six weeks because it's not in this current dev sprint. But as soon as this dev sprint is over, we want to get stuck back in uh, and look at this item. And so just by doing this, I'm able to go and, um, you, you know, manage and close alerts and performance counters in my environment. I'm able to see, for example, the performance counters that were, you know, uh, at play when the, you know, alert or event happened. You know, we can see just there. And I'm able to look at things like, was there similar events? And you can see that there was similar events and where they were. I'm able to see, is there related events? You know, and lo and behold, hey, look, there is some related events. And I can go into this related event and I can see, you know, was there a problem with, um, SQL, you know, this is saying our market summary uh, CS is having an issue and we can really get into the code, understand what's going on and get a really good understanding of what's happening. Inside distributed chains, I'm able to just see, you know, what the, uh, how many steps are involved in the uh, counter and you're really able to get a fantastic view of the environment. So, um, if we just think about the, the steps that we've gone on this journey, the very first step was we deployed agents, you know, got IIS, SQL, you know, all those management packs in place. Next thing was to get the application monitoring, you know, get it in, get it working, get it in place. And um, uh, all that we've been looking at here is a server side application monitoring. So uh, it is possible for us um, inside our applications to work out, um, can we go and do uh, client-side monitoring? So there is, um, so, so how you got into the inventory list, of course, is because you know, we installed the IIS management pack, but it's possible for me to go in and say, check client-side monitoring capability. And what this is going to do is it's going to go and check, does your website, is it using JavaScript or VBScript on the client side? Uh, simply because APM cannot use uh, VBScript. It will only work when we can get to inject a little bit of Java. So um, this is the very last step in building the APM, you know, the application performance monitoring uh, pyramid. And what the uh, very last step is, is for us to have the ability to inject a tiny bit of JavaScript on your client side browser. And what that does is it allows us when we go and publish a uh, we're going to publish this monitoring and I go to a website and I try and access the website that APM puts a tiny bit of JavaScript in IIS that gets sent to your local browser and it gets to understand and build a picture of what's happening with your local browser and what the client view of this so it's really like building up the very last you know, steps of what's going on here. So um, this is a super cool tool. 
it's a super cool uh, product there's so much that you can do with operations manager that maybe you already know or you haven't been doing already this is the you know this is the place for your application performance monitoring uh, go check it out